What's going on guys, it's Brian of Man's Comics, and we are back Thursday night, another episode of the CBSI Bolo Show. With me as always is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo, day after new comic book day, Jack, what's going on? Ready to rock, Brian, I like this list. We got a list with a little bit of everything, a little bit of variant buzz, a little bit of first appearance, and of course that long-term play of the week. Right. I say day after new comic book day because that's when this video airs. We are actually pre-recording this Wednesday night on new comic book day, but the market moves in a day. We're here to discuss some of it. But before we get into that, it is important to know that this show is sponsored SlabbedHeroes.com. Make sure you guys check out Nick Dwartman at SlabbedHeroes.com for all your guaranteed modern 9-8 needs. Not only that, but he also sells raw comics as well. Fantastic shipping. We call it bulletproof packaging. Enough bubble wrap to protect your house in a hurricane. But either way, check out Nick at SlabbedHeroes.com. Also, we want to give a big shout out. We have a new Patreon member, Ivan Bobin. Hope I didn't crush that name. I am Gore the God Butcher of pronouncing names. <laughs> but thank you so much for your support. And speaking of Patreon, we also do have... The Bolo Mystery Box, right? Patreon.com forward slash Simple Man's Comics. Tell them about the box, Jack. Yeah, it's not your average mystery box. You know, we really put a lot of effort into curating these boxes. Um, We are trying to keep it small and grow organically at the same point. We are open for business. And um, we have a great group of Patreon subscribers right now who participated in this past month's box reposted their boxes on Instagram with that hashtag September Bolo box. And uh, we are going to draw a winner uh, for the bonus box and announce it tomorrow on our Instagrams at AKA Mr. Bolo and Simpleman's Comics. So be on the lookout for that for sure. But that's where some of our channel sponsors come in and like Frankie's Comics, um, who provide us with some amazing variant heat for these Bolo boxes. Yes, yeah, so a huge shout out to Frankie's Comics for sponsoring, donating those books that we go that goes directly into those Bolo boxes. And thank you for those that already support the channel on Patreon. You support the channel and you get a fantastic mystery box with all those great variants in it. And if you just want to support the channel in other ways, there are other tiers, different rewards for different tiers. So check it out at patreon.com forward slash simple man's comics. Getting into the Bolo list this week. Like we always say right here, if you might not be aware of what the Bolo list is, it is the be on the lookout list that comes out for every new comic book day. Jack is the curator of this list, but it's not his list. It's not my list. It's not our list. We always say we're the guardians of this list. It is the community's list, the reader buzz, confirmed first appearances, variant buzz, but Jack does put in his long-term play at the end. And we're ready to get into this, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah, let's do it. So we're going to knock it off right now, getting into first appearances for the week. And coming up on our first appearance, this is probably one of the biggest books of the week as well. That's Batman Beyond number 37. Yeah, this is a lower printed book. Um, you know, you're at a point in this run where um, most LCSs are pretty much ordering this for subscribers, maybe a few extra copies for their shelves. Um, and when you have a situation like this where you have a new character, character appears on the cover, a lot of buzz. There was also some other stuff going on, like um, the last of the Jokers appearing in this book, which that may be a first appearance of note. Um you know, uh, a character, Blight, who I think, it, you know, appears in the DC universe previously, but this is kind of like that beyond version of Blight. Um, so a lot to go with this issue. Uh, there was a major buzz. A lot of damages reported on cover A, which I think has a lot to do, too, with the scarcity and rarity. And unfortunately, we had a lot of reports of LCS is kind of upcharging that cover A up to 12 to $20 on release date, which then, you know, scares some buyers away from making those initial purchases. So all of that kind of combined into a perfect storm for this being kind of one of those books to pay attention to on uh, on new comic book day. Um, also, this is a character that's kind of been teased for a few issues. So this is going to have that like cameo first full sort of debate attached to this character. Right. It was definitely really popular at my LCS. 
Plus, like you said, lower printed. They didn't have many copies, but I was there when it actually first opened today, and those were kind of the first books to go off the shelf. So people were aware of them. So confirmed first appearance, and definitely some reader buzz attached to this book. Yeah, can I keep it real though, Brian, for a second? I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this one. And I'm gonna tell. I gotta tell you why. Why would you pay more money for the first appearance of Batgirl Beyond? Then you would pay for the first appearance of Batgirl. And don't tell me print run. Because that's what people are going to say is print run. But, like, you got to use this. this is where you got to maybe use some common sense. Like, Batgirl's got a TV show, right? That TV show is active right now on the CW. Um, those first appearances are regularly selling for 8 to $15. Maybe $20 if it's, like, real near mint. Um, but it, it never ceases to amaze me when FOMO sets in. Um, Batman Beyond is essentially an entire different universe because it takes place in the future, right? Um, there's a kind of a new character for every existing DC character. Yeah, there was a um, female Scarecrow not too long ago. Yeah, um, but we don't jump on all of those characters. So this is one of those ones where I think uh, FOMO kicked in as kind of this one got reported and talked about. So, yeah, and I'm not, not hating on anybody. If you pick this up for cover price, by all means, that's a good buy. Um, you know, but if you're chasing this one and you feel the need to pay $20 for this one, um, I would ask why, you know, um, if you're a big Batman Beyond collector, that's great. If you're coming from it from a collector perspective, I'll never judge another collector, buy what you like. Um, if you're coming at it from a, a speculation perspective, I don't understand how you can make money based on the current market value. Right. I agree with everything you're saying, but I like the fact that this title is getting that buzz and getting the attention. I think this yeah. is one of those books that is often underappreciated, always has great story in it. I like this list because we have a lot of DC books on this list this week, and there hasn't been much chatter about DC, but we're talking about DC books tonight. And... In a minute, because this next book isn't a DC book, but the next one, the first appearance, is Marauders number one. Right. Now, we talked about this one on the um, the last call show, the FOC show, um, which, again, I love now the kind of continuity between the last call show and the Bolo show that we're getting to talk about books before that final order cut off and then see how they kind of play into the market. This was a must pick up for most people. Um, most people wanted to read this book. Um there was a lot of excitement for it, but from a say speculation perspective, I'm still really doubting the ability for this many X teams to be carried in the market. I think eventually you're going to see some get popular and you're going to see some fall off. Now, which side of the spectrum this book is going to um, fall into, um, we're going to have to wait and see. Now, also, Simpleman's Comics family, you know how I feel about team appearances, right? So if you're not familiar, I, I think team, I, my philosophy is that they're not sound investments. Teams can change. Rosters can change. It's, it's a tough thing. When the first appearance of, say, X-Force itself isn't a, like, major key, I find it hard to ever believe that, like, the Marauders is going to be a major key. Now, I could be wrong. But that's kind of been my generalized feeling is those that's not a place where I put my money. So for me, this was a cover A reader pickup. And then if, you know, after reading it, I feel differently, that's fine. Um, I haven't seen a lot of buzz from the variant art thus far. It's a little early in the game. You know, like Brian said, we filmed this Wednesday night. But um, that's kind of where we're at at this point. I am liking those Every Mutant Ever variants i do think that that is going to be an amazing set to put together and that kind of segues me into uh another little tease uh pay attention for this uh set discussion becoming a more regular discussion and piece of content here on the simpleman's comics youtube channel right i picked up cover a haven't had a chance to read it yet and just like i said during our foc show i know stranger comics did it but i wish Marvel, at least just for this issue, brought back that hip-hop cover and did a Midnight Marauders Tribe Called Quest cover for this. But either way, that's going to wrap up the first appearance section. There was one more on the bolo list, but we're going to get to that a little bit later in the show. Yeah, and I, I do want to interject one more. Um, I want to say shout-out to our Simpleman's Comics Patreon family member, Carter Lee, who uh, alerted me to uh, uh, Ghost Spider number three. 
Um, there's a character who first appears in the first issue who has a changeover in, into a uh, villain in uh, looks like a budding villain in um, issue number three. She takes uh, the serum from the jackal and kind of transforms into a kind of like cat like hyena looking uh, character um, kind of early in the game. Right. To talk about an issue like that. The bowl list is always is pre confirmed appearances that was not one of them but that was kind of a surprise appearance on new comic book day i think it's gone completely under the radar i haven't heard a single person talk about it but you got to look at what happened with star we talk about world building it is quite possible that this is a character that will be a big bad for uh gwen stacy in this new ghost spider run i think some would argue this is a cameo but it teased into issue four. It looks like there's going to be a big showdown. This, to me, reminds me of Ultimatum with Miles Morales. Quite frankly, Jack, I'm shocked you didn't have Spider going on there with, in parentheses, cat-like figure for first appearance. <laughs> <laughs> but good information, something to keep and pay attention to going forward. We've been bullish about that whole Ghost Spider yes. series. But, uh, yeah, first appearances. But now we're going to go right into... The Reader Buzz section for tonight. And the first comic on the Reader Buzz section is Action Comics number 1016. We're in the thousands. Right, and I think we're going to see this as a trend with Action Comics. I think they are going to land on the Reader Buzz section for quite some time, so long as Naomi is involved in the storyline. Um, let's be honest, that's where this is coming from. It also comes on a day where the Naomi trade... The season one trade um, hits shelves. And I love the title of seasons going with trades rather than volumes. I think it kind of plays into the whole television aspect um, and lets you kind of know that we're coming back. There's going to be more. Um, so I think it, they're slow playing this story. Now, I did not get a chance yet to read this issue, but I've been told that they you don't get the huge reveal that some have teased is coming. I think this is Brian Michael Bendis' style, though, right? I think he's kind of he's, – we saw that. If you read Naomi, um, Brian, you and I have talked about this. It, it felt like every issue uh, was going to be the issue that we found out who she is, where she comes from, what's her superpowers. And some of these questions we never had answered. Now we're sitting in the Action Comics run, and we're hoping to get those answers. But, again, we talk about sets. I think if you're a big believer in Naomi, you probably want to be putting together – this Action Comics Naomi run. Right. And let us know in the comments, are you reading Action Comics? Do you still believe in Naomi the character? I know some of the attention has kind of drizzled down a little bit, but I also think we're seeing it spike back up, especially with her appearance in Action Comics. I, for one, am looking forward to come back in her regular title, but Action Comics, this is another one I've picked up, haven't read it yet. I've read two comics so far t the, today, and that was King Thor and Money Shot. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. But next one on the reader buzz was Batman Superman number three. Yeah, so we're going full on dark universe here, Brian. Um, we knew that we were going to get kind of the, again, I you, know, you guys know me. I don't like these like first full cameo type things. So in my mind, we already had... Um, the Superman who laughs, right? We had that last issue, but this is going to get kind of branded that first full appearance. And I think the cover A does a great job, obviously, depicting that. But in this issue, we also get um, Jim Gordon, that dark universe kind of Jim Gordon who laughs. We also get the Blue Beetle who laughs. Um, and we're kind of rounding out this almost like herald of a rogues gallery of, uh, of um, dark universe characters who are kind of uh, – Backing up uh, the Batman Who Laughs. Um, and, you know, it's funny. Y you can kind of look at this as gimmicky, and it is to an extent, right? But you also have to look and see that the, the Metal series is going to return. There's going to be a another um, Dark Knight's Metal um, miniseries coming from Scott Snyder. Um, we also have to look at the fact that Batman Superman has never been a series that sold really well. The only time we ever saw spikes in the secondary market was when the movie was originally announced, and we all know how that movie turned out. So it's kind of cool that this has solid reader buzz. Like, we're three issues in, and all three issues have had reader buzz and have landed on this list. 
And again, I don't make this. I make this list. I put this list together. But this list comes from what you guys are talking about. And you guys have not allowed me to overlook this issue yet three issues in because you guys are posting about it and excited to read it um, prior to its release every time. So and I and I think even with this issue, there was so much talk about what happened in the issue that I don't I don't see that stopping with the next issue. So I think we're going to continue to see that. So they seem to have a kind of a, a reader buzz hit on their hands. And Brian, you mentioned DC Comics. We've talked about this on the Hot and Cold Show, right? DC Comics has been kind of cold from a secondary market perspective. And that's cool. But we, this channel, we're not all about speculation, right? We're, we're comic collectors. We're readers first. And yeah, we like to speculate and we like to invest and we like to sell comics. And that's cool. Um, but at the end of the day, we're comics fans first. And I got to say, as a comic fan, DC Comics is quietly, it's not being talked about, but they're quietly making a comeback. We've seen it with these black label releases. We're seeing more and more DC Comics series is getting like major credit for their, their writing. Um, and then there's some quiet back issue moving. I have a back issue Bolo article on comicbookinvest.com right now talking about the Watchmen with the Watchmen series on HBO, moving Watchmen and Doomsday Clock books. So it's something to keep an eye out for. Um, I think DC Comics may be making a quiet comeback. Right, and I'm a huge fan of the writer of this, Joshua Williamson, right? Yeah, yeah. He, so, he's an amazing writer. Does a great job with Flash. Um, did, did, did a great job with kind of like horror independent titles. Nailbiter was awesome. Nailbiter was amazing. That's one of those ones that like I still have a stack of those hoping for like that option news, right? Um, and, you know, it's one of those books where – I think the Dark Knight's metal kind of characters are perfect for him yeah. because he does a great job with Flash and in the, in the DC Universe superheroes, but he's a horror guy at heart. You kind of get that feeling like that's where he kind of plays well. So this is a great series. I'm enjoying this three issues in. And this was a series when it got announced. I was kind of like, meh, I don't really need this, you yeah. know? It's like how many times Batman Superman? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I have such a bad taste in my mouth from that movie, right? I don't want to hear about Martha. So at this, I, I I wasn't hyped for this one, but I've enjoyed it. Three issues in, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm so slow and lazy. Just read number two last week. Looking forward to reading number three. Even if they are handing out like these characters who laugh like, like they're Oprah. But right. either yeah. way, um, looking forward to reading this issue. And it sounds like it's another stellar one. But this next one, the reader buzz, we talked about this during the FOC show. We were high on this in the FOC show. And lo and behold, comes out and it's hot. Yes. So this is my favorite book to talk about. Um, it's not the long-term play of the week, not because it's not my favorite book, but like I like to talk about the long-term play. That's a long shot book, right? That the long-term play is a book that maybe is getting overlooked in the secondary market. This is certainly not getting overlooked. This is the winner of the day. This was a book I told Brian about before we filmed the FOC show that I said, Brian, this is the book that people don't see coming. This is the book I'm excited to talk about. This is the book that I was paying attention to the moment this storyline was solicited. You guys out there in the Simpleman's Comics family know I'm an IDW fanatic, first and foremost. It's probably the publisher, them and Boom Studios, that as just a fan, I enjoy the most, right? And they have these series that may be geared towards kids. But I knew I've got a brother who's a diehard Venom fan. And I know that Venom fans are completionists. They have to have everything. And it doesn't matter whether a, a Venom book is in continuity or it comes from, you know, some Elseworlds type story or uh, in this case, it even comes from Marvel Comics. I knew that Venom was going to be a character that – when it showed up in this Marvel action Spider-Man series, people were going to want. I think cover A is being slept on because I think everybody's so focused on the variant that I think even cover A will have its time. I actually only picked up cover A. Yeah, and I, I think in the long run, I could probably make an argument for cover A for a long-term play, right? I probably could have done that because – now, be careful. It's being reported that there's an 8,500 print run. That is not true. That's based on the last issue. I promise you this issue got ordered more than the last issue did. There were people who were aware. I would still say it's probably was. under 15, though. Without a doubt. It, it'll with, that's the point. It's, it's without a doubt going to be one of the tougher Venom books to get. Plus, there's a percentage of these books that are going to wind up in the hands of kids, that are going to wind up – and we say kids, but really it's young readers, right? It's, it's just younger readers. Um, and it's going to end up in the hands of just readers in general. 
But I think that quoting that number 8,500 is a little misleading. Um, and, it, and it may end up being one that, you know, we've heard people say, well, there's 850 of the variant. There, I, I would find it hard to believe there's not at least 1,000 of the variant. Not that that makes a huge difference, but that variant is incredible. When that variant art got solicited, John Boy Myers is one of those like up-and-coming variant artists where so, some of his stuff can be hit or miss, right? But when he hits, he hits hard. And uh, his depiction of Venom here is just knocked it out of the park. Um, I think if this was a Marvel variant, it might get overlooked. Because we see amazing Marvel Venom variants all the time. But coming from IDW, this wasn't on people's radar. We talk about how people order books, right? You go through the previews magazine. Diehard Venom fans, they might not even check the IDW section of the previews magazine. Matter of fact, Marvel has its own separate little mini version of the previews magazine. So you may not even go through the bulk of the large previews magazine to even find this issue. Um, if you were looking online, you may just look at Marvel solicitations. You may not have looked at IDW solicitations. But I got tagged several times today, Brian. Um, people kind of giving us a little bit of credit. Um, and again, this is why we do it. For the fact that we covered this on the last call show. This was, I, I, we put this out there. We wanted people to be aware of it. I said, my, my man Dustin Saunders, uh, shout out to Dustin Saunders, a uh, local guy to me who is uh, in the CBSI Facebook group. He begged me not to talk about this book. But we, I knew there were some people who were low-key making a spec play on this book. But we wanted to make people aware that just a couple days before FOC that, hey, if you're a Venom fan, don't overlook this book. And I'm glad to see that some of you guys out there in uh, Simpleman's Comics family were like, you know what? I wasn't aware of this. Let me go ahead and grab this. Um, I appreciate those tags. I appreciate those comments. Again, that's why we do it. That's why we came up with the last call show. This one, uh, I think, is going to have some staying power. And I actually think a lot of times we talk about high prices on New Comic Book Day, Brian. This one kind of has unlimited potential. Like I do think it'll dip some because everything does a little bit. But I think in the long run, it's not impossible for this not to be a $100 book or more. Because it's just the, the, the supply isn't there. There's less of this book than there is of the average Marvel store variant. So because of that, you're going you're gonna to have a book that is widely loved by collectors because of how gorgeous the cover art. A character that's as popular as any other character. Um, I think this is going to end up in a lot of PCs once these initial ones get flipped. And long term, you could be looking at a serious book here. I agree. Especially it's one of those... Um... I think right now it's going to be one of those niche books that people get because it's outside of the main continuity. But as copies dry up and get stashed in people's collections, I could see it being well sought after. And I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the um, estimated print run sales figures are here in a month or so. Right. But moving on into the reader buzz. This was another one we talked about, and it was. Money shot number one. It actually had four covers. I believe there was two black polybag variants for this, right? Yeah, there were. There were two. They ended up with two of those. Uh, uh, Peach Momoku and I can't remember. Tim who. Seeley. Tim Seeley. There you go. And then you've got, the, of course, the Vault Vintage variant, which we talked about. Brian and I had to look up for the pre-FOC show. is a fantastic four issue, um, as well as cover A. So again, this is Alien Space Porn. <laughs> just yeah. just put it out there man it is what it is uh it's some it's some futuristic aliens trying to hustle money um i want to know how the pitch meeting went for this book <laughs> right because it... um and you, and this you, we've talked about this man you know this these are books that like the solicitations make me um make me blush right uh make me almost uncomfortable but it's funny ever since faithless we've seen this like push for these like, I'll say erotic stories, as long as they're kind of like tastefully or tongue-in-cheek style done. Not like, you know, people, it's different when we're talking about, and I'm not hating on these releases, right? But the Zen Scope or the Boundless Cast releases, it, that's a different thing. Um, but these kind of like erotic stories or, um, you know, they're kind of the comedy, sexual comedy stories have been kind of rising in popularity. We've seen more and more of them pop up. Yeah, like I said, um, when we discussed it previously, it kind of reminded me of that old Leisure Suit Larry game, except it's female protagonist and it's in space with aliens. But same, um, 
Yeah, she enjoys herself. But <laughs> I'll just leave it at that because I don't want to get into too much. But it was a but good did book. You, you and I was going to say, do you like the book? I enjoyed it. I kind of was like, um, I want to see where the next issue goes. It wasn't one of the ones where I was like super wowed. But I, I enjoyed it because it was just, it was different. It was unique. Um, I can't totally identify with it because it's from a, you know, it's, it's a female perspective. But... It's crazy, man. It's definitely out there. I, I definitely recommend everyone at least give it a shot, give it a read, see what they think. And if you have read it, let us know in the comments. What did you think of this book? Are you going to pick up issue two? I'm definitely going to pick up issue two. Huge fan of vault books. Wassel Brothers. Love them to death. And, um, yeah. I saw a lot of – it's interesting you mentioned the female perspective. I saw a lot of uh, the female members of the comic community on Instagram and on YouTube – um, and again, sh you know what, shout out to all the, the YouTubers out there doing comic content. We got a chance to hang out with a lot of them in Baltimore comic con. Um, shout out to everybody who's doing what we're doing. Um, and just trying to spread their love of comics, but especially shout out to the women doing it. That's just amazing. And I think it, it broadens the, um, horizons of our hobby to so many people it makes them, um, Make me kind of shows that inclusive nature that we have within comics. But I saw a lot of the uh, the women of the community uh, posting about this book. So I was like, well, maybe I'm prejudging this book a little bit. You know, Faithless had a popular female f following because it, it was really respectful to a woman's sexuality. So um, that's, I think this is real interesting to see. So I think that's a good point that you made there. Right. But the next book, we also talked to, this creator, when we're at Baltimore Comic Con too, right? And we're talking about Beyond the Beyond the Demon, the Sea, number yes. one. Yes, this is also by the writer of RV9 coming soon from Mad Cave Comics as well. And one thing that we were impressed about this book, especially at Baltimore, is the interior art on this, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely amazing. So the art of this book is done with a tattoo style, kind of like the old sailor tattoos. Um, it is stunning absolutely stunning when you see it um it's it really blows you away it's a one shot um now it's important to note there are going to be two more one shots each with different styles one with like kind of like that american kind of classic tattoo style and another one with that pinup girl um tattoo style so be on the lookout for those coming from source point press but this is an incredible book, visually stunning. Shout out to uh, Emiliano, um, who is one of the owners of CBSISwag.com, who's another sponsor on this channel, who um, he hipped me to this book when he picked up an advanced copy. Um, that was the one that had that matte, co matte copy, right? The matte, yes, the matte cover. The uh, That was kind of like that advanced um, copy. Now, I will say, the matte cover is cool. But I kind of like the the regular cover for this because it has that same feel of what you'd expect from a book like this. But yeah, Emiliano got that advanced copy. He sent me as soon as he got it, he sent me screenshots and was like, check this out. I think I almost overlooked it a bit. Like I looked at it, I was like, man, that looks great. It wasn't until I saw the book myself at Baltimore Comic Con that I was like, oh my God. This is just this is just out of this world. So um, I hope some of you out there are able to check this out, are able to grab it. I know that a lot of you guys report that it's sometimes hard to get source point press books um, and, and many small press uh, companies wherever you are in the country, but that's network with on Instagram. Check um, their website. They sell yeah, check their website. website. That's true. Um, hit up the, hit up the writers, hit up the creators. Um, maybe they can point you into that in the direction of where to get these books. Sometimes they have the books themselves. Um, but, you know, uh, that's the beauty of the community is there's some that have access to these books, some that may not. Um, and, you know, we can help each other out with this. But th this book is incredible. Uh, the art is stunning. Um, and I'm excited to read the story. Right. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to all the Source Point Press guys. We were able to talk to a bunch of them at Baltimore Comic Con. Great down to earth guys. Just love the community. And they're grinding and hustling to put these books out. And it shows because we're constantly talking about their books between Frank Gogol's and Dead End Kids. We're talking about Stan Kanopka and The Rejected. I mean, uh, Bob Sally and Ogres. I mean, and the list goes on. Bunch of great creators. And we love supporting indie comics here on Simple Man's. 
Yeah, and one of the cool things about Source Point Press is that when you when you're like a creator for Source Point Press, usually you wear more than one hat, right? So a lot of those creators are also doing a lot of like the back end work and a lot of um, other positions. It really reminds me of kind of like an independent wrestling kind of feel, right? The old ECW days where Bubba Ray Dudley would co have a tag team championship match and then go sell T shirts in the back. Um, <laughs> these guys, these guys are hustlers, and um, you know Frank Ogle, you mentioned from Dead End Kids, he made a point of saying that like they're really trying to refine the brand, right? They're trying to, um, um, you know, honor their past, but really take it to new places. So these guys are focused. Um, I think this is a good brand to get behind and to start paying attention to their releases. Then the next book on the reader buzz, which is one of my favorites, of course. And this was King Thor number two. This is the second book I was actually able to read tonight. Love this issue. If you read the first issue, you know Gore the God Butcher's back. This issue has Gore taking on Thor and Loki a little bit. I'm, I mean, the whole thing's a big old fight in space. And it's just freaking phenomenal. Um, Loki, I think for the 1,967,000th time... Seems to die in this issue. <laughs> Spoiler alert. My bad. But the story, Jason Aaron. I mean, I posted on Twitter tonight. I was like, Thor, oh my gosh, King Thor number two. So <coughs> good. Going to miss you, Jason Aaron. I'm, but I'm sure Donnie Cates will do great. We even had a discussion about that this weekend. But I don't know if you had a chance to read this, Jack. But if you haven't, I recommend you do. Yeah, I, I actually – I didn't fully read it. I skimmed through it this morning. Um, I went through it real quick. Um, is that Was there now a first appearance of a, like a sword? There's a new – like the Annihilus sword. The Annihilus – the Annihilus – Annihilus blade. It comes – Yeah. Basically, the Necro sword gets turned into this blade, right? And it's floating through space, getting ready to come to gore. Um, of course, I have to keep looking. I'm reading the story, and I have to keep looking at the, the, the art because the art kind of – tells more part of the story that's not in the words so you gotta kind of pay attention like well normally you have to do that with every comic but this one if you're just watching the words and kind of skimming through the art you're gonna miss some stuff in there because there's there's some things that are going on there that i mean it's a great book but like i said a biased thor fan jason aaron fan but i'm interested well, yeah, in what other people think about it yeah and the point i'm making is you know the necro sword kind of had it today speculation wise i wonder if this will be an issue that people pay attention to for that you know if that sword is going to turn out that blade is going to turn out to be of sense of importance and again with donny kate's taking over um you never know how he's going to use things in the future right if he goes and writes that that blade into a story you know th that could easily make this package take off it's also important to note like if you haven't read king thor and king thor is sold out at your lcs the second print of number one also released today so excuse me so you can uh, you can pick up you get an opportunity i love when they do that you get an opportunity to pick up that second print number one and that first print number two on the same day and kind of get caught up right now admit there's been times where i haven't been a fan of of sad ribbick's art but with king thor i've absolutely loved it better than um i've liked it more than mike damundo's art <laughs> interior yeah. on, on Thor but I'm not I'm not the hugest um Assad Ribic fan but I will say if you ever get a chance to see him at a convention and watch him paint live in front of you it is just stunning the guy is immensely talented so we're gonna go into the last book on the reader buzz section and that's another big book this week from Marvel Mortal Hulk this one uh supposed to be setting up what a new multiverse type story yeah, that's what it looks like. We may have gotten a kind of a new universe, though. We got our World Breaker Hulk. Um, I don't know. A lot of people were real bullish on this one as a huge spec play. I don't know if I saw that. Um, again, let me know in the comments like if I, what it is that I'm missing with this book. Because I read it, and I just... Um, I feel like there's a lot of directions they could go, right? But this was one I considered for the long-term play. I know that there's some other YouTubers who are very big on this book. Um, but I, when I read it, I was having a conversation with a Patreon family member. And I said, you know, I just don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't want to go out and say, like, this is one I see being that. Because it could be. Um, 
but there wasn't enough for me to definitively say that. Now, here's where I'm going to say something super positive about this book. One thing that I think you and I missed when we were talking FOC show is that green blank variant. I was, you, you were you're saying positive. I was going to say, how ironic is it the most expensive cover is like, hey, we're just going to put the trade dress on a, on a green cover and we're going to sell this for $500 and we're going to make it a high ratio. Right. But, it, that, it's really reminiscent of that absolute carnage. Um, that absolute carnage, what was that, one in 200? But yeah, but we've also talked about how these color blanks have been popping because we discussed that with um, Shameless Plug, but channel sponsor Frankie's Comics with that Joker, you're the villain in that purple cover. Yeah, you and I saw firsthand this weekend, though, um, you know, Ji Hyung Lee working his magic with uh, um, those purple those purple covers and what can be done. So um, just amazing. Uh, I'm a big fan of these uh, of these colored blanks. I never thought that this would be something that I would get into, but um, it really takes the blank cover game to another level. Now, it's tough when the buy-in is so expensive, right? Yeah, I like them as covers. Amazing. Yeah. How do you how do you get a and then who who's trusting an artist? Man, you if you're gonna do that, you better take it to Alex Ross, right? Because you know, I'm not going to the local guy at my convention and getting uh, these these things remarked. I mean it's just that's difficult. So I don't know I don't know if Marvel's really hitting the mark there with that. Now I saw like the black Ghost Rider one that they did. I saw some amazing uh, artwork done at New York Comic Con with that one. But that was a cover price one. Um, I I don't even have a problem paying like the price that Frankie's charges as a store exclusive um, and getting it done. You know, ten fifteen bucks that's reasonable. But paying like the three hundred dollars and up that we're seeing for the Absolute Carnage and for this one that's rough. Here's one that's. How do you how do you explain that purchase to to like your wife? <laughs> you buy that and be like, oh man, look what I got! And she's like, how much you pay for that, babe? This was a steal I got for like four sixty. Yeah, <laughs> and to make it, it's, like, is it like in Captain Crunching? Because I don't see a picture on there. Yeah, to, well, to make it worth anything, I have to spend another two hundred dollars to get a commission, and I've got to get it uh, certified through CGC. So that's going to cost me even more. But yeah, I, I I'm with you. I love those color blank variants, but not for that price. Yeah. Other than that, I think the Sorrentino variant seems to be the one that a lot of people like. Yeah. And it's important to note I don't have it on here, but the cover A there was a high ratio version of that Alex Ross cover as well. Right, right. And that's going to wrap us up for the reader buzz section. Real quick, before we get into the variant buzz section, do us a favor. Click that thumbs up button for us. It means a lot for us. It means a lot for the channel. Helps us get recommended to other people. And if you're not and haven't done so already, or this is your first time here, please consider subscribing as well. And click that bell notification. That way you'll always be notified of future video releases. And with that being said, we're going to get into the variant message. Kicking us off on the variant buzz, we have that 1 in 100 in Hyak Lee Future Fight Luna Snow variant, right? Right. Now, this one does not seem to be doing what the previous Future Fight 1 in 100 did. But we see this frequently with speculators. Brian, I know you've talked about this at length on the channel where um, it happens with publishers. Um, it happens with cover artists where you have some success with one type of a spec play and you just assume that it's going to translate over. We talked about that on the last call show with Crescent and Io or EO. Um, with that upcoming release, I think watching this one not do well. And I say not do well. It's selling for $75 to ratio. And it's still um, early. Is, Never know. Yeah, which is not terrible. Um, uh, at the same point... Um, we like to see, if you're talking about a book being hot, you like to see it over ratio on release day, and this is not that. So, um, and it's certainly not where the uh, the other one was, uh, the White Fox book. So, um, that's something to be of note. Now, if they're going to do all these characters, I would say watch out for, like, Wave, because Wave seems to be kind of the, um, 
the clear winner of all of the uh, new Agents of Atlas characters. So I would be interested to see if I was going to jump back into this one in 100 pool, that would be the one that I would keep my eye out for. But either way, great cover art. Amazing. Then the next book that we have up on the Variant Buzz list this week is these Absolute Carnage. These are the later printing variants, right? Right, and they fall into the Variant Buzz section, but truly these are more Reader Buzz. Um, Now, I don't think it's really hard to get the first prints of a lot of these books, um, but in case you live in an area of the country where your LCS sold out of this book and you're unable to get it, um, these later prints all came out in one day, which I think is really convenient for a lot of people to be able to, maybe for whatever reason, I, you slept on Absolute Carnage. I can't see it because I know a lot of people were all over this book, sold a couple hundred thousand, but maybe you slept on it. Maybe maybe you were reading something else. Maybe you didn't believe the hype. Maybe you viewed it as a cash grab and now your friends have convinced you it's time to jump on. You had the ability to walk into your LCS yesterday um, and go ahead and grab all three of the first three issues and um, grab them at cover price and have an opportunity to sit down and kind of a Netflix-style binge and catch up on the series. I think that's pretty cool. I, like I said, I like when Marvel does that. They allow you to kind of catch up with multiple issues on the same date. Um, and you get some new variant covers, so variant collectors have a little something that they can chase if you're a completionist or something like that. These are all new cover art. Right, that was the point I was going to bring up is there's there's completionists out there that they want every cover, man, and they have some of my LCS because like we showed those Immortal Hulk covers, there are some people out there that when they say they want every cover, they want every cover. And I was like, wish I had their comic budget. But... Nonetheless, there was some buzz behind these. We talked about them kind of in the FOC show just to bring in people's attention. But these later printings, we always talk about how we like the later printing covers with different art, even though sometimes it's using interior art on the cover. Either way, something other than just a barcode color change or, or trade dress color change, it's always great to see on these other later printings. Then the last book on the Variant Buzz section this week is... Amazing Mary Jane number one variants. Yeah, now this was kind of like a take your pick situation where a lot of people were liking a lot of these variants. I don't think this is a major reader buzz um, series. I think this was kind of like a um, what are you doing kind of series where I don't think people really were hyped to read this. It seems almost unnecessary. But at the same point, there actually ends up being a winner of the day with this series. Um, First off, the art germ variant is gorgeous. Real, real absolutely stunning depiction of mary jane but as some of you may be aware and maybe some of you aren't there's actually a secret variant for this book um so most of the covers of this art germ variant when you see uh, you see it in kind of the, the upper left hand corner and also um the second from the right on the bottom um you see the kind of like uh i don't know what they kind of call that but the the, the action kind of uh board they use it when they're filming movies um it comes with the the trade dress the amazing mary jane trade dress but approximately one in five copies actually had the kind of like chalk written out amazing mary jane very subtle change um but those are going upwards of 20 dollars on release date which is very interesting uh to know um and of course, there's a third version. There's a virgin version where it says nothing, and that was a high ratio variant. Um, and that was the one that a lot of people were aware of. But those secret variants seem to be the ROI positive winner of the day on this book. Because if you were able to pick those up for cover price, you could flip it for $20. There seems to be a good demand. And we've talked about secret variants on the channel. They're a unique thing that like Marvel does where they don't tell anybody about it. Retailers weren't aware. Many retailers did not notice this. Um, most of the people that we talked to were able to grab this out of their pull list or or pull their pull box or off the shelf. Um, a lot of times we hear about these secret variants the day before this one was kind of like a midday breaker. So, um, this is one to keep an eye out for. And they, this is one, as you're watching this Thursday, you may want to check your LCS on Friday because you never know. There could still be those copies sitting, sitting at the shop. Um, and, uh, you know. 
you never know what you can see. You know, check those shelves because we see that all the time. People are able to find those. But either way, gorgeous cover by Art Germ. He really killed this one. I will bring up one thing is this is also a, a – we sit here and we talk about, you know, this book's kind of okay, so forth. We're kind of used to Mary Jane, kind of used to the backstory. But this is a book that I could say could entice new readers, and I say that because my wife is a new reader. I picked this. She was interested in this book. She liked that art gym cover. She read this. She said this was like one of the first Marvel books that she's read over the past few weeks that she actually enjoyed. So take it for what it may, what you may. Um, there was a lot of store exclusives out there for this cover as well, for this title as well. But either way, there was variant buzz. And I'll be fully admit, maybe it's because I was stuck in an office with no cell signal, but I wasn't aware of that secret variant until just now when you brought it up. There you go. So. And, that, so, and there may be other people that, that are like that. Um, like I said, it was, a, it was a midday thing for me that I, I started noticing people talking about it on Instagram. All right. So that's going to wrap up the variant buzz. And we're going to go right into Jack's long-term play. And for Jack's long-term play this week, we have Detective Comics 1014. Now, both uh, covers are depicted here, but I'm, I'm a strong believer if you're looking at this one from an investment standpoint, that cover A is probably the one that you want. Because if you're investing in this book, you're investing in this book for Nora Freeze. Now, I say Nora Freeze. Nora Freeze is usually spelled F-R-I-E-S. Um, she is the wife of Victor Freeze. And if you know anything about Victor Freeze, who is... Dr. Freeze, F-R-E-E-Z-E, -E. um, she is really the muse behind his villainy. Um, she is sick. He is trying to find a cure for her. And at the end of the day, Dr. Freeze, right, he's not really a bad guy in the true sense. He's just willing to do anything, and I mean anything, for the woman he loves. Um, and I think there's a lot of us out there who can relate to that, right? There may be somebody that you love or you care about. And it may not be a woman or a man in your, in your life. It may be your children. Um, those of us out there who are parents, what would you do to protect your child? Um, you know, where, what kind of like moral line would you ever set for yourself? So in this issue, he seems to finally have, say, the cure for her element. But it turns her into kind of like like himself so we have the first appearance of mrs freeze and it's right there on the trade dress on the cover we see it it's, it's clear as day this was a first appearance i saw coming but it was one that i felt like i wasn't hype about and having a discussion with a, again a civilman's comics family member shout out to carly we both kind of felt like maybe this isn't a great long-term play character right because She's the reason he exists as a villain, right? He only exists as a villain in trying to get this cure for her. So if he gets the cure for her, what is his reason for continue to be a villain? So is this really a character that we're going to be able to see? But if you read this issue, there's some things to note. First off, there's a great interaction between Dr. Freeze and Bruce Wayne. He gets that cure from Bruce Wayne. Um, that and the kind of like a serum, and when he does, Bruce, you know, Bruce is kind of you know doing his Boy Scout um, kind of chastising of of Victor Freeze's behavior, and Victor Freeze kind of throws it back at him and goes, "If you had the opportunity to have your parents back for one day, you know, to have them back in your arms, wouldn't you do it?" And Bruce Wayne says, "No." He makes that judgment. No, um, I would not. I would not hurt innocent people just to have the person that I love back with me. But it's easy for Bruce Wayne to say that, right? They've been dead for how many years? He doesn't actually have that opportunity. So it's very easy for him in the position that he's in to sit here and um, make that judgment of Victor Freeze, who actually has the opportunity to have the person he loves who's been in kind of stasis for years and years and years um, back in his life. Um now, there's also this weird interaction between him and his wife because 
his wife essentially hasn't aged, but he's aged. So when he goes to kiss her, there's some kind of like timidness with her. And so as I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, this is a great issue from a reader buzz perspective. This is a great issue um, from those of us who are Gotham fans who have enjoyed Dr. Freeze. Um, he's a tragic character. But then the point where I said, no, this is actually probably a good speculation play is in an effort to give his wife, who was a dancer, everything she ever wanted, he goes to um, the kind of like the – it's kind of like an opera house, uh, you know, the, the uh, auditorium where she used to dance. Audience is packed in there, right? He freezes them all so that she could perform on stage. Um, when she performs – now, here's the key. She doesn't care that he did this. She doesn't care that he hurt all of these people. She's touched that he did this for her. So I think that's the moment where we realize Dr. Freeze has a partner in crime now. Um, there's also a moment at the end of the book where the bat signal seemingly is in the air. You don't see the bat signal. She asks him, what is that in the air? And he goes, I think Bruce Wayne alerted someone to our actions. But then he has that line. Remember, we're in the middle of the year of the villain. Um, and he has that line where he says, uh, I think Lex Luthor's plan is kind of coming together. So there's going to be more to this. It's going to tie into everything. But this is my long-term play. And it's a riskier one. Okay, I'll give it that. But it's, it's my long-term play. First off, great read. This could be in the Reader Buzz section, no doubt. I love the cover A. I think it's a great cover. It actually was um, in the Reader Buzz section. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. Um, but I think Reader Buzz alone, this book stands on its own. It's a great read. It was enjoyable as hell as a Batman fan. But Dr. Freeze is a character I think we can all agree, right? Outside of his first appearance, what other Dr. Freeze keys are chased in the market, right? I even try to do some research. Like, there's not Dr. Freeze variants. There, there was a time where um, the new 52 Batman annual, was it annual two? Yes. And it wasn't expensive, but I think it went up to like $20 at one point. Right, because it was like the kind of like his reintroduction because yeah, he, he hadn't 52. been used. Yeah, he hadn't been used for a while. There, and then it was, and then it's also, if you're not, if you're newer, it's also important to note that there was a time when like new 52 first appearances were a thing. That obviously isn't worth anything now because we're past the new 52. It doesn't really um, pertain to where we're at. But the point is that Dr. Freeze hasn't really been a character who we've gotten development from. Um, he's a tragic character. It's a character I enjoy because there's so much dynamic storytelling you can do. Um, I, I, like Carter, was a little skeptical of this at first because, again, you're you're – taking his muse away. But then once I looked at it and said, looked at that not as a negative, but as a positive and said, well, now you can go anywhere with this character. Now you're not tied to that. I'm doing everything for my wife. He's been a villain for so long. So now the question is, is that who he is? Has he crossed that line from doctor who's just trying to save my wife to full blown villain of Gotham city? Now he's got his wife by his side who reveres him for the steps that he took for her, for the fact that he maybe compromised every moral for the moral that was important to him, which is love and the commitment that he made to his wife. Um, and where is it going to go from here? So first off, I think this story is going to be great to continue to read. I think it's going to bring you into the next issue. It's going to make you want to read that next issue. But – there's a possibility that they could do something really dynamic with this character and give Dr. Freeze kind of a second life as an important character in the Batman rogues gallery. And they have this new character. And we know how female superheroes are by his side and Mrs. Freeze. Where we don't know how she's going to react to all of this. So I think this is a good cheap spec play where you can get in on this for cover price, grab that cover a, and who knows down the road, what, the writers of Detective Comics or Batman, remember James Tinian's jumping on that that series, what they could do with Mrs. Freeze, Dr. Freeze, and kind of the combo of the freezes. Um, I'm excited to see that. And I think looking at all the books that were released this week, 
that's the one where I sit and go, that's the best kind of overlooked long-term spec play of this week. Who wins in a fight, Dr. Freeze or Captain Cold? Oh, I'm going Dr. Freeze all day. But <laughs> Yeah, that, that'd be one I have to think about. I mean, I, it just popped in my head. Because I'm trying, at the time I was like, what other type characters are out there that are kind of similar? But yeah, I think Dr. Yeah, Freeze. Dr. Freeze. Cause Icicle. He, he's, got, he's got the drive of, it's always the, he's a, like you said, it's always about his wife. Nothing's going to get right. his wife. You, you got Icicle, Icicle Jr. I like when uh, in um, like the old cartoons when all of the fr- Freeze characters would come together. Um, you know, uh, what's it? Caitlin Snow. Uh um, from the Flash, yeah. uh, you know, and all of those characters kind of come together, and you'd have those that freeze team. But yeah, you know, it'd beat all there's of a them? lot. Who Elsa? <laughs> Figures a Disney guy, right? <laughs> would say that. But, She'd let it go, bro. Yeah. She'd let it go. Let it go, bro. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, um, I, I like that too. But I, again, hopefully, one day we'll have Doctor Freeze in the movies where we can really depict that sadness and maybe a little bit better than say Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. It's funny. Cause every time I read, <laughs> I picture Arnold Schwarzenegger when I'm reading it. But uh, I think my, I think most of us of a certain age do that, Brian. <laughs> I just think that that's natural, right? Uh, it, he tried, bless his heart. He tried. I did like him in the Arkham video games. The, they use Dr. Freeze there, but, but yeah. So there we have it. Jack's long-term play. I like the long term play, like we always say. This isn't it's it's a long shot. It's that's why I like the long term play. I mean, maybe it does something, maybe it doesn't, but it's always low buy in, stick it, shove it in a short box. Who knows what may happen? I mean, we all know the trend with modern comics, like I mean, the chances of these books, I mean, it's very minuscule as far as what does what catches heat for a little while, but as far as those really once in a however many chances you want to talk about sooner or later one of these might pop i always like the long-term play myself so thank you for doing it for us jack oh no problem man and the key is you always got to zig when others zag right so if everybody's chasing that hot book of the week um and you feel like you left out there's always a book out there that has a long-term shot i will my six-year-old told me a joke the other day speaking of elsa and he i kind of already gave the punchline away but he asked me how come Elsa can't hold a balloon or how come Elsa isn't allowed to hold a balloon because she'll let it go. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great six year old joke. <laughs> he was all proud of it. And I even chuckled a little bit. I think I'd even just snorted there, but um, either way. So that wraps up the Bolo list tonight, but we have one more show for you this week. And that is the last call. Love that show. We have some adult Kool-Aids. We talk about books that are, Hitting final order cutoff, we give you our top 10 picks. It's not in any order. We're not saying these are speculation picks. We like the comic book hobby. They could be reader picks. They could be art picks. There might be a speculation pick in there every now and then. But they're always books we think you, the viewer, Simple Man's Comics family, should be aware of. And that's why we always love talking about these. But, Jack, it's your favorite as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for for the same reasons you say, I mean, um, we were able to highlight a book like Marvel Action Spider-Man 10, which is now red hot. We're able to get that like late breaking news, like last week when we talked about Folklords, adding that Dan Mora vein and that Dan Mora uh, sketch 125. We're able to alert the community of things that are going on and allow you the opportunity to get in on the ground floor with a book, whether it's a book you just want to read, whether it's a book that you've been dying to collect, or whether you want to go grab multiple copies to speculate whatever you want to do, whatever makes you happy in comics. That's all that matters as long as we're all enjoying this hobby um, that brought us here and has us watching these shows and for us making these shows together. Right. Also, real quick before we let you go, we announced it last night on the Hot and Cold Show. That Hot and Cold Show will be moving to a monthly show towards the end of the month. But in the meantime, during those other weeks, We are adding two more pieces of content. The first one we're calling three up, three down. It's basically a compressed short, three hot picks, three cold picks. Jack and I are going to host that. And we've listened to you, the viewer. A lot of these shows tend to run long. This this is going to be one of those videos. It's about 
15 minutes or so, so it's more digestible and really getting the information out to you on a weekly basis. And then at the end of the month, we gather that team back together for the hot and cold, harness those picks up, and give you a nice, good hot and cold list at the end of each month. But there's one more piece of content too, right, Jack? There is. There is popular demand from uh, Simpleman's Comics family. We are bringing you – now, this is the Bolo Show. This is where we talk about New Comic Book Day. But we are bringing you the back issue Bolo Show. Now, unlike this show, like Brian said, where it's about an, usually an hour, hour plus, this show will be compact, about 15 minutes. We are going to bring you top five books that are – um, ones to be on the lookout for. Again, that's what Bolo means, be on the lookout. Um, they may not be spiking yet. They may be on the horizon. And we're going to have some fun with it, right? So they could be five books that are hot right now. They could be five books of a certain theme, of a certain character, from a certain artist. Um, we are going to bring you a new show every week, and we are going to keep you informed on some books to be on the look for when you're hitting your LCS. So you're not just looking at that new release wall. You're also checking that back issue bin. And we are excited to bring new content to the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. And that's not all. I mean, we've got more content that we're not even ready to announce yet. But we're going to be bringing more of that short form, 15-minute, hit you, get you in, get you out type of content that you guys are demanding from us. Right. And with that being said, that's going to wrap up our show for tonight. Before we go, I want to thank everyone that participates in the live chat during the premiere of these shows and for those that comment on the replay. And not forget those, of course, who listen to the audio version of this on the podcast through iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And with that being said, we will see you on the last call show tomorrow night, and we wish you a good night.